All right, hey everybody, and welcome to the 90 Minute Hour Challenge. My name is Bobby Chu, I'm your host, and we also have on here my co host, Masei Seki. Hello, everyone. All right, and today we have a guest artist, hometown hero here, the one and only <laughs> Lyndon Lee. Hey, Lyndon. Hey. Awesome, and uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to the 90 Minute Art Challenge, everybody. So what do we do with the 90 Minute Art Challenge? How does it work? Well, every challenge, we have a different um, subject, right? And what you want to do is you want to go to tumblr.com and look for 90 Min Art Challenge, okay? Mm -hmm. If you see 90 Min Art Challenge, uh, click on that blog and then you can find all the various subjects. So today's subject with Lyndon is this one. Holy smokes. Complex. You got the cool light in the foreground. You got the warm light in the background. It gets very complex. Maybe we could start a little bit differently today and just start off with what are the things that people should pay attention to, you feel? You know, what were the things that you needed to pay attention to? as you're doing this, uh, this exercise, do you remember? Um, well, for me, this one was like, uh, what stood out the most was the, the values. Um, obviously the, the light coming in from the, from, you know, through the tunnel was the brightest, right? And then like, if you squint, like overall, it's just like this, like big, fr big dark frame with like, um, this white, uh, lighter valued circle um, so I think that was like the first thing that I noticed which I wanted to definitely uh, nail um, and then obviously after that would be the the cools versus the warm colors Linda but, uh, you're, you're about, yeah it you looks doing? like you're playing with Legos what's going on oh. with yours <laughs> uh, so I've been experimenting with a, with a style of painting where I only use hard edges and not 100% opacity. And right. uh, for for this challenge, I was playing around with the rectangle tool and just going in with 100% um, opacity, no blending. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think every time there's a value change, there's an opportunity to to shift the uh, mm -hmm. shift my hues and uh, my color. So yeah, I was really trying to push that in this painting. You do an amazing job, my friend. Um, love Thanks loved how this one uh was and how it turned out how difficult it was and all that stuff it's fantastic uh we also have on here uh, the discord channel if you wanted to join us on discord you can go to lbx or bit.ly slash lbx discord and then here you can find all the people on discord and join us, you know, paint with us. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Just having some fun, right? And so um, you could do that. And while you're doing stuff, why don't you go to Instagram and look up Lyndon Paints and follow Lyndon right there. You can see all of his incredible Lego work. I mean, paintings. No, <laughs> they're beautiful. They are so cool. They are. They are so cool. Look at that. You know, like... um. It's tough to paint 100% opacity, 100% flow. Uh, so this is one to bookmark. This is one to follow, everybody. Go do that right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you're done your 90 Minute Art Challenge, you could upload them to Instagram, hashtag it 90 Minute Art Challenge. And there we will be able to see your lovely uh, paintings you know, from the 90 Minute Art Challenge. Look at all these wonderful redesigns. Uh, great stuff that's fun yeah it's oh the this one is really style. cool this person used uh the dissolve um yeah feature that that cody was talking about in his stream you know so that's really great to see that's very cool and the profiles from uh, this one's nathan's uh, challenge. Nathan's. Profiles, yeah, yeah. This one. Good stuff. Fantastic. Really great. Really great work, everybody. 
Anyhow, uh, also just wanted to mention, how are we doing this? Because we're all painting together at the exact same time, right beside each other. Uh, we're using Magma Studio. It's a free app. It's a free painting app. You do not need to install it. It's all web-based. Use Google Chrome if you're going to use it. That's what it's optimized for, but it's totally free. And you can buy into the Pro account if you like as well and get all this extra stuff. Uh, was this your first time using Magma, Linden? First time, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so you caught it, on. It was real a lot quick. of fun. Yeah. What was that uh, experience like for you, painting with you know with us side by side at the exact same time? Uh, yeah, definitely miss that that um, artist to artist interaction. Um, been stuck in quarantine for for almost like a year and uh any chance i get to to paint with other people is really great and this this was uh usually i i just like hop on discord uh, and paint in voice chat but uh having magma open and seeing like what everyone's painting at the same time we're all painting the same thing it was like yeah it was it, it reminded me of um being back in uh art college and seeing like all my classmates like working on the same same assignment yeah it was, it was great in the pit at uh, Sheridan College, did they still have that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's where we would hang out uh, as <laughs> fundamental students back in the day when I was there. I think, I think it's still there. <laughs> yeah. Do they still call it the pit when you were there? Uh, I feel like it, there was a different name, but it was something similar to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> then you knew that was like for the un art fundamental um, students. Yeah, that's a really good area if you don't want to be bugged because like you can't get any reception there it's horrible oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is a good way to disconnect <laughs> yeah supposedly uh uh toniko pantoja he, when he was there as an art fundamental student at sheridan he was in the pit or something for like a long time and his mom couldn't contact him uh you know, all the way from, I think she was in Indonesia at the time or something. And she starts to get real worried because like, oh, damn. oh no, right? her son that's across the world is not answering. <laughs> but he was just in the pit. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Anyhow, we also have Discord on here. Discord people, you know, feel free to join in. I think like a bunch of you probably know Lyndon already as well. Hey, Lyndon. This is Kofi. Hey, hey Kofi. How are you? <laughs> nice to see you here, man. Yeah, good to see you, man. <laughs> Great nice. to see you on here, Kofi. Right on. I, yeah. I wanted to ask, um, Lyndon, I know that you use uh, Heavy Paint a lot. And mm. with that app, um, is is it? do you do like a similar approach you know, using 100% opacity, like really blocky uh, brush, I guess. Um, and you like, you know, block in big things at once. So um, that was actually inspired by the limitations of the app at the time. So mm -hmm. when I first started using it, uh, there was no blending, no, uh, no opacity. Uh, and the brushes were all super basic. There was a just like a default draw brush is like super chunky. Uh, like the shapes I made was like all like all like bl uh, blocky squares and there was a rectangle tool and there was a line tool and that was like pretty much it and a, a, mm -hmm. a fill tool um, so learning to paint in that uh, kind of inspired like the style that I have now you know and when you work out uh, we a lot of us we generally try to isolate muscles try to isolate parts right to really really work on and that's what your Thing kind of reminds me of it's like you're limiting yourself but yeah you're concentrating on certain aspects of art right so like what did you find really improved when you started to tackle this style um so for sure my color got a lot better because i wasn't i was um, trying to decide how to do all the transition colors like um, from form terms and instead of using 
like a, a opacity brush or a texture brush to to kind of just pick the light value and dark value and blend it together. And that's how I got all the values in between. I handpicked all the all the transitions myself. And that way I had the opportunity to push all my saturations like to the max and really like have the colors that I want. <clears throat> That's really cool. That's that's cool. Yeah, I guess it's like when you have to force yourself to think like, oh, what what is the color or value that goes in between these two things, like the two, uh, you know, shifts. And because I guess Photoshop, we always have like the extra tools to kind of have a shortcut to that. It's kind of like you know taking back all the all the things from your your tool belt and just like it's like. Oh, you only have like uh, a wrench, for example. You got to do everything with just a wrench. So it seems like a really good way to just like force yourself to learn like how things are supposed to look. Mm, yeah, for sure. Have you guys played with heavy paint at all? No, no, I've just been. So... I... What do you use? An iPad for that, I guess? Uh, I like to use the desktop version because I can have all my references up on the side. Uh, oh, yeah, the, okay. the iPad version is great too for plain air. I only thought that uh, mm -hmm. I didn't know. I didn't look into it too much, so I thought it was just a app. Cool, very cool. Have you used it? Mr. Yeah, they, uh, I have. I actually uh, downloaded. I bought the um, the upgraded version, like the paid version with all like the different features, but I, I still haven't gotten the chance to, you know, play with that because I was thinking I could probably use it like outside doing plain air painting, but because we're indoor all the time, indoors all the time, it's like, it's hard to get around to that. Mm. But it's a really awesome app. And it, um, who, who was the artist that created that again, Lyndon? Uh, Von Ling, Heavy Poly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. For yeah. him to like he's an amazing artist too that. yeah uh mm -hmm. worked on spider-verse uh witness from i uh, love dev robots yeah he's he's a beast mm. he is anybody in discord have any questions or anything you can also use slido by the way everybody listening you could go to slido.com you could see the uh on the bottom of the screen there it says questions and Use Slido, Nighty Mac. No questions. This <laughs> may seem kind of simple. Oh, my bad. Uh, oh, no, go for it, please. Yeah. Uh, I'm not much of a painter, but uh, I'd like to understand when you're approaching, say, I guess the best way to say it's like landmarks that are on a certain reference that are very sharp and edged. I'm not sure how to approach those without like doing like sketchy lines with an actual pencil how would you approach it just asking linden go for it you're you're the guest here you're the star everybody wants to know what linden thinks so uh to clarify do you mean like the hard edges on architecture and uh like buildings and stuff yes oh okay um so I think there's a lasso function on Magma Studio, right? So that's a great way if you're using an airbrush, just uh, mask off that area and then just uh, make a hard, nice hard edge of uh, the lasso tool. Okay. Uh, does that answer your question? Sorry. Yeah, that, that was it for the most part. Thank you. Yeah, that is a good way to like isolate certain layers and like yeah you don't necessarily need to work on one layer at a time and especially it becomes efficient when you do that because it's like you're saving a lot of time trying to like work around like certain you know hard edges and uh trying to keep it like within certain areas yeah and uh if you've watched zach red's paints uh this is exactly like how he does things he just like lassos a bunch of areas and like fill it in with his uh with his like color jitter brushes and it mm. looks like very readable in the end. That's cool. I, I do like the blocky, like, you know, go straight 100% opacity approach because it seems like you get the, once you get 
the the values and the shapes right like right away then um all you have to do is kind of like work around those values to get like you know certain details but as long as that's established it's like and that works it's like everything else is just a little sprig you know just like the finish like the icing on top it's like yeah. building the, the 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 foundation the the cake like itself <laughs> And yeah, I feel like sure. that's that's sometimes like the hardest, or at least for me, it's it's the hardest part. And I'm still trying to get used to like, you know, kind of simpl- simplifying things down to shapes and values, and making that work will make everything else like work as well. Can I just point out yeah, something yeah, here sure. that affected me? Like, uh, I loved it. It influenced me. Um, stuck in my head those little orange little bits on the blue turquoise wall on the top of the painting where linden you just kind of sprinkled them in it's like polka dotted pretty much now but it works it i really appreciate seeing that um can you kind of talk about why did you do that <laughs> oh yeah so that's actually something i picked up from uh like watching nathan's class on schoolism uh, he mentions how uh, he uses a technique called like poor man's impressionism, and what he does is a uh, he just like picks two colors of the same value and uh, just like does a really rough like dry brush over it, and it makes like all these like little dots that's um, the same same value as the as the base color, and uh, but the the hue is like is like drastically different. So I I really try to in my own work. Um, Wherever I can, I just pick something um, that's like not the local color, but it's the same value as the as the material, and I just like sprinkle it in, and yeah, it's it's really fun to do. That's cool. Hey, I yeah, I it is really cool because it just adds like just having that kind of adds more flavor to the to the painting, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. And it's such something really cool to try, you know, if people haven't mm-hmm. been doing it, you try it out. Um, that challenge with Nathan, his, uh, his study, right? It looked monochromatic pretty much with a little hint of this warm fire. But when you mm-hmm. look into it, there's all sorts of colors there that all blend together, just like what Lyndon was saying. Optically, it blends together. Mm-hmm. Hey, I had a question. Yeah. Yeah. So, or also it's a statement slash question. So I do use a more like full opac- opacity style. And someone said it's almost like you're sculpting um, digitally with the paint. Uh, do you feel that kind of way when you're creating in your style? Hmm. Uh, I haven't sculpted before, so I, I don't know what the feeling's like, but... I do think um, about like form turns and and uh, and try to think of every object as a as a as a box or like as a three dimensional object. Uh, yeah, have you have you guys? Uh, yeah. What do you guys think? I think very sculpturally, so I know exactly what she's talking about, and that's definitely the right route to go. Like you're heading in a very good direction. Once you start to mm-hmm. feel like you're sculpting with your pencil or tablet pen or whatever, then you're truly tapping into like how to create solid structure. Mm. Um, actually, from that statement, I kind of imagine it more like uh, getting the like when you're sculpting, you want to get the general blocked out shapes. And then after you do that, that's when you like start carving in the small details. And I feel like that's, or I don't know if, if it's true, but Lyndon, it's like you you blocked out all the big shapes, like the big values, and then you're like, you know, making it into micro details rather than like the macro. So to me, when I hear that statement, that's kind of like what I think is like, you just want to get the big shapes there rather than like, you know, doing little, little details as you go. Mm. Uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> well, if, I'm not sure if that's what... Um, uh, Lisa met. Well, and speaking of um, other 
types of uh, art, right? Sculpting. What about watercolor? Hey, segue into... <laughs> We're doing a Discord challenge here, the Fairy Exchangeling Challenge. All you have to do is do something traditional, uh, paint your own version of what you feel a Fairy Changeling Exchangeling is, and we have the um, details in Discord, of course. Uh, and where's the Discord here? Let me just show you where exactly on Discord. If you are on Discord, you just need to go to, um, scroll down a little bit here. No, scroll up, sorry. Exchange things somewhere. Uh, well, anyways. Uh, I think it's at the bottom, near the oh, bottom. Oh, here, here we go. Ex challenge, exchange -ling, uh, fairy exchange -ling. So you can post your work in progress here. Oh, snap. We're going to see some cool stuff. Yeah. Right? Ah, uh, these are great. And how it works. Here's the instructions right here. Mm -hmm. What do you, what are you doing this for? Well, you're doing this for yourself, but hey, we're going to help a little <laughs> bit by um, adding in a little bit of a uh, motivation because we will also be doing exchangeling paintings. That's irises so somebody random is gonna win this traditional painting one of a kind by iris compete of hurt exchangeling and one from me and one from Masse, which i will show on monday perhaps. yeah i still need to scan mine <laughs> yeah but i could tell you it's awesome and it's just you know it's all for free it's all just to try mm -hmm. to gather the troops, you know, the art community together and start doing some awesome art together. Yeah, it's a good excuse to just pull out your paints and go back to our roots. <laughs> yeah, and we'll be picking the uh, the winners live with Iris mm -hmm. um, two weeks from now, something like that, Missy? Two weeks from now, yeah, on February 12th. At 12.30 p.m. EST. Awesome. But the due date for your painting, your original fair exchanging, that fairy exchanging design is due on the 10th of February. Fantastic. And uh, also the winners get a three-month subscription to Schoolism. So yeah. there you go. And you get to take Iris's course too, or her fairy workout, which is really awesome. Yeah, but uh, actually first, what's going to happen on Monday, we're going to have Nikolai Lockertson here. And dude is amazing. He's really freaking good. He Holy cow. So good. Oh, hey. he's painting. Hey, Bowie. Um, I just want to let you know, uh, Jamie said that your volume is quite low. So uh, I don't know if you can do anything with that. Oh, uh, okay. On the YouTube end. I'll use my louder voice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Patricia. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so as I uh, as we were talking about the watercolor, I just have to say, um, I, or more like, I have to thank Lyndon for uh, you know inviting me and you know convincing me to go out to do plein air painting when you know obviously that is not something that I normally do. Um, <laughs> I think it was I, when did we start hanging out again? It was like. June-ish? Yeah, around that time. Uh, it was summer. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, you know, a pandemic, pandemic is still happening. We're all indoors. And I forgot how we, uh, you know, got in contact again. But um, you were like, hey, we do like weekly um, plein air paint sessions. Like, do you want to come out? And I remember the first month I was like, you know, uh, I don't know, like, I don't really do plain air paint. I don't know how to use gouache that well. Uh, but after, like, many attempts, <laughs> like, of you inviting me, I, I, like, caved and I went. And I, in the beginning, I remember the first day, like, I had the, not the worst experience, but I just had a very not so great experience just using gouache. But after, like, uh, a few weeks of just doing it and, like, you know, forcing myself to understand like how our color is supposed to be mixed together to achieve like, you know, a, like a certain um, uh, color. 
um, I feel like it helped me a lot in my traditional, I mean, my digital painting, just because it's like, you have to really, I had to like really, really think of like what I have in front of me and what do I need to do to, you know, what colors do I have to combine to make my painting. Mm -hmm. So I feel like just, just having that whole experience in the, for maybe four months, like really leveled me up. And I definitely saw the benefit of like just plain air painting. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I saw that after you came on uh, painting with us, like a lot of your personal pieces, you started incorporating a lot of the, the lighting scenarios and the, just the back backdrops that we kind of saw in real life, like that like fall autumn piece that you did with the, with the creek. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so I actually went to, I had the opportunity to move to LA for like six months uh, to to learn and paint and plein air paintings, like all they do over there, all the all the studio artists, like every weekend, then even like during the lunch breaks, they would just like grab their watercolor sets and gouache sets and like just head out and paint. And uh, after, after seeing that, like I really wanted to bring that back to Toronto and uh, I know we have like a big community of artists here and we just need like someone to like host host events and um, then all the passionate people will come and paint with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just need that one person to lead the lead, lead the, the charge. <laughs> yeah. And it's cool to know that, you know, it's like you only need one person. You know, mm -hmm. really, uh, so many times you just need that one person to to lead the charge. And we were talking about like your group there, and I was like, "That's so awesome!" It reminds me of subway sketching, and you're kind of saying the same thing, right? Like starting a group in the first year, it was just me. It was me. It was K drawing with me, and maybe uh, my roommate Jesse. Jesse. Jesse uh, Winchester Schmidt, he, he would come out most of the time as well um, for an entire year and nobody else was coming, you know, but then <laughs> afterwards, then it started building and got real crazy. So, uh, but then Lyndon, how was it like for you when you tried to start it up in Toronto? Uh, yeah, it was pretty much the same thing. I pretty much just before I moved to LA, I was painting outside by myself like all summer. And I, uh, yeah, I just did that for like two years just by myself. And uh, I, I think I just didn't have the, have the right um, communication skills to, to get people to come. And uh, in my own work, I didn't have the visual vocabulary to, to convince other people, hey, there's like, there's like cool stuff out there. Like, come, come see it with me. And it just, it just takes time to develop. But you stuck in there for two years. Good for you. You freaking deserve this more than anybody. You know, it's great. That was like twice the time that, you know, I, I had to <laughs> do. And you're by yourself. I just want to mention that. That really shows something. You know, it really, really does. Because doing it with a buddy, painting with a buddy is about you know, 20 times easier than doing it by yourself. Mm -hmm. I think I had like James Gurney videos to keep me company. I would just watch his YouTube um, in the morning, get excited and go, go paint. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure like in the beginning, your paintings weren't too hot, right? Cause no, oh man, it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take before you uh, started doing stuff that you kind of sort of liked? Uh, I'm not sure if I still, I'm still, I'm still struggling here. I, I think um, I've been feeling like I'm on a bad painting streak for like a few weeks, but um, my philosophy is just, um, even if I don't feel like it, just, just paint anyways. And I'll, I've never regretted like doing a bad painting afterwards, like looking back. I'm always happy that at least like I practice. <laughs> and Masay, I could see, oh, you're doing the blocks. 
you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I stole it from Lyndon. <laughs> But that is one of the coolest things about painting together is like you could look over and go, oh, I want to try that. Yeah, I think seeing like, especially like how saturated Lyndon went and how you can just like feel the warmth from his like, you know, Lyndon's painting. I when I realized that I think this might happen later on in the video, but um, I was like, oh, my gosh, that is what I'm missing. And I just start, start adding all this like saturated, uh, warm, warm colors in that like little area i feel like i i was maybe i i don't know if i was influenced by linden or by some past guests but i could see like my opacity is thicker than what i usually do um mm. yeah but then i just kind of dived in I, I zoomed into my own space and i stopped seeing your stuff because it's all the way on the other side yeah, I think having Linda right beside my painting, I couldn't help but just, you know, peek over <laughs> and see what he's doing. I feel like I did that even when we went plein air painting. I would just like, you know, peek over and see how does Lyndon do it? And it actually really helped me, like just seeing uh, your approach to specific subjects. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then once I apply it to my own painting, it's like, oh, things are, you know, coming together. So it's kind of like you learn faster when you paint with other artists. Mm. Yeah, especially if you're all looking at the same thing. Uh, I remember when I was in LA, I, I hosted a still life club and I would do a painting that like I was pretty pretty satisfied with. I get up to, to look around. Then I see like what, what my friends are doing. Then I, oh, crap, then I could just sit back down and <laughs> <laughs> keep painting. <laughs> Yeah, it's good motivation. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Anybody in Discord wanted to join in? Um, I actually had a question, but it is slightly unrelated to the painting here, but it's about one of um, your previous works, Lyndon. Sure. Um, yeah. So um, I was sort of interested in this uh, color script that you did for uh, what Once Were Brothers, which I'm guessing is a short film, or I, I was wondering if, if is whether this was a, if whether this was from a storyboard um, to a color script as a different, as a separate process, or, or what that process um, would be like if, if that were the case, if, if, um, yeah you had first storyboarded and then color scripted yeah for sure um oh uh bobby is on my website if you oh okay need to cool. look at it but yeah uh that was actually for a documentary project uh that i think that was like my first art job here in toronto and it was a documentary about a, a local toronto musician uh and yeah uh the director wanted live action footage and also um like animated footage from from like parts of the documentary where we couldn't get uh like live action footage uh so yeah he he what he provided me with a storyboard and he just uh like let me do whatever i want pretty much um he tr he gave me a lot of trust mm -hmm. which i really appreciated just uh just make it look cool uh just make and uh yeah does that answer your question yeah um that's say no i um yeah um i just think it's so i it's fascinating to me to see like um all of the different ways that you could approach um stylistically for an animated film and then like i guess tr seeing it all together is um it, it seems like an important way to figure out like uh the style throughout um because i guess um it, it one thing that it was really helpful for me seeing was the color palette right but um i guess uh how how were you able to figure out like i guess stylistically how they would all be similar 
is that something that you were able to workshop with all the frames together or was it just with one and then it influenced the others? Uh, I think I wasn't really thinking about style. I was more thinking about uh, just like the, the time of day, the lighting scenario, and just like the materials that's like in the shot. Uh, and the the style, like at that point, it just it didn't really matter. The uh, color script, yeah. it's more for just like giving the animators like an idea about like how to how to like put the character and the and the background like in the same like same environment and make it look cohesive. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Wonderful. Why don't we go to a Slido question now. Anonymous says, how to properly study and not just copy a, f a photo or, I guess, life. <laughs> Maybe you could talk about that. Yeah, so um, I think there's a few ways to study. Uh, depends on what your area of focus is. If you're just working on value and color, uh, just there's I don't think there's any harm in like just like copying exact and just matching the colors and values as long as you're not just eye dropping from the reference. I think uh, being able to just like see a color and immediately grab like grab it from the hue box or your HSV slider is like a, a really valuable skill. Uh, but if you're working from uh, a reference and you're trying to develop your shape language and stuff. Uh, I'm actually taking a class with Mike Hernandez right now. And the way he, he's teaching us is just actually have a the reference at like 50% opacity and have a, a new layer on top of that and just like trace directly over that. And by doing that, uh, you're, you're simplifying a lot of like the, the lines and uh, you're editing like which, which uh, curves and straights to like keep in and yeah, but that way of studying is like it's like it's not very good to look at. It's not something you post on Instagram, but it's super valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you guys? Uh, How do you like to study? So many different ways. I go through phases. <laughs> like I'll go through a phase where I'm just copying it. I'll go through a phase where I'm looking at it. I change it. Um, I'll go through a phase where like, you know, value study, right? So I'm just minimal value study of like two or three values or something like that. Mm. Uh, there's so many, there's so many different ways. Mm -hmm. What about you? Masai? I think, uh, I think, um, <clears throat> in the past, uh, I guess more looking back, uh, whenever I did studies, I feel like I did the study for the sake of doing a study, like making myself feel as if I'm like, oh, I'm being productive. I'm just doing a study. Like I'm going to get so good. But I, f I, I realize now that that was definitely the wrong way to think about it. Um, it's like Linda's saying, it's like, you're, you're like kind of like focusing on this one thing that you're trying to achieve from doing that study. It's like, you're trying to like um, break down things and answer things and try to like, uh, take a specific thing rather than, you know, um, try to just copy like everything and making it spot on. Um, in my mind, I think recently, whenever I do studies, um, I always have like a question in my mind. It's like that I want to answer right after, like as soon as I'm done the study, I can like be like, okay, this is the answer that I had. Uh, sorry, this is the answer I have for the question I had in mind when I pick this photo. So I like, whether it be like, what are the like warm and cools? Like how, how do they work together in this like specific photo? Or like, um, is like, how does form work in this kind of lighting scenario? It's like that, that's the reason why I choose that photo. Um, and just like, I think having a, a goal in mind helps a lot and it sounds like really obvious and it's like duh but um i remember in the in the past i would just like you know mindlessly do studies without really uh taking you know 
making it a lesson for myself. Now, uh, studying Lyndon, that was the thing that was locked in my head since I met you. I was like, this guy loves to learn, he really loves to learn, and it's really hardcore about it. Uh, you got to be hardcore to to sign up for the Schoolism in-house workshop, that's for sure, because you are separated from your life for 30 days, right? And you're there with some strangers learning how to paint and you're living with your mentor. And then during the thing, we would bring in a guest artist. I believe your guest artist was Vouter Tulp, right? It was actually Karkamo. So oh, I got to see like the entire entire watercolor class like in person, and he did like paint over for us. It was amazing. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, because yeah, yeah. Actually, oh. Vouter is in the chat, and he's like, "I met Lyndon at the schoolism house." Oh, so that I actually uh, I went back to 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 the lake house uh, after oh. after I finished my program to just to visit T, and that's oh. when I went and met Vouter. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> He went back as an alumni. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Awesome. Yeah. Big shout out to Vouter in the in the chat there. Hey, Vouter. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Carcamo. Holy smokes. Uh, Masse and I, we've done a boot camp with Carcamo right in Toronto. Mm -hmm. It was life changing. Yeah. That really had yeah. a lot of influence on, on the my exchangelings painting that was very much mm -hmm. it, the Carcamo style or my version of Carcamo style i'll never <laughs> be able to reach his style his level probably but uh yeah yeah but it's really cool to hear like um linden how you you know uh went back to the schoolism house to just I'm guessing, like, obviously to go visit T, but also learn as well as you were there. So that's like, you know, it kind of goes to show like how dedicated you are with um, your studies and art itself and you know, always trying to like get better. How time. long ago was that, by the way? Do you know, Lyndon? Because we I don't do the schools in the house anymore. Yeah, I think it's been like two and a half years. Wow. Uh, yeah, so funny story. Uh, the studio I'm working for now, my my supervisor Avery, she went to the Schoolism Lake House workshop, and um, a color script oh. artist uh, Jen Jenny Tan also went to the workshop. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, oh, for wow. sure. That that workshop did a lot of like good things for a lot of people. Oh my gosh, we should start it back uh, up. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's awesome. It's like kind of bittersweet for me because, you know, I've mentioned it before, I lost a ton of money on that project, but it was mm -hmm. one of the most gratifying losses of my life, I guess. <laughs> 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 it's up there. It's up there with the Dubai trips because those were <laughs> huge. Like, <laughs> all right, well, yeah, definitely not making money on that trip. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's worth it. Worth it. Don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else in uh, Discord? Let's let's uh, chat with Lyndon. I have a question. Yeah. yeah. For Lyndon. Well, Hi. it's more like um, hello. <laughs> uh, it's more like asking for advice. So. I've always been like more into, well, I draw digitally, but I, I've always been more into traditional media like oil painting and gouache. And mm. I've always been into the idea of, of, of how is it called? Like, um, painting outside? Uh, plain air painting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot the concept. Yeah. Um, so I already have friends who like, artist friends in my town but they're not really into that so i would only do that by myself if i want to do that and that's not really a thing like plain plain air painting mm. in my town like i've never seen it before anywhere in my town so it would be like very weird for me um do you have any tips for this <laughs> uh 
trying to get people to come out to paint with you. Mm -hmm, yeah, but like, they're not very motivated in those kinds of things, but yeah, good try. <laughs> uh, you just gotta be persistent. Just uh, in in LA, there's a group called the Warrior Painters. It's a massive group now with like thousands of members, but it all started from mm -hmm. the founder Angela Sung. Uh, she just like painted by herself with her with her wife and um, dogs for like years and years, and uh, she just kept posting on Instagram like all her painting adventures. And when people see that, like like they 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 want to they just get excited and they want to go paint with her. Uh, so just keep doing what you're doing. Just have fun and keep posting on like social media, your, your, uh, your plain air adventures. And, uh, eventually people will, like see like how fun it is and they'll come join you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Just and like these, did uh, you... mm -hmm. oh. oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's fine. I was just going to ask, um, uh... Did you like paint it for a very long time by yourself? Was that uncomfortable? Uh, I think when I'm out, uh, like just being able to observe nature uh, and see how like light works, that was like enough for me uh, to like it. Uh, of course, it's like super nice to have friends around, but. Um, mm -hmm. Being being outside is is like a feeling that I can't get from anywhere else. So, uh, it, yeah, it's a bit of a trade off. Uh, mm -hmm. Even even if you're painting your, by yourself, it's like it's it's really worth it, and and uh, it'll affect your your personal work too when you when you go home and uh, you'll have all those experiences like in the back of your mind. Like 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 I say, you can see in her how like how her work evolved in the last few months. Uh, yeah, just just keep painting, and you'll find like like-minded people. Also, like you, you obviously you look back on those days, right? And you're not thinking like, "Oh, he's so lonely. I'm, I feel so bad for him," right? You probably think like, "That's when I was maybe feeling a little lonely. I could have used some some friends, but good for me for sticking in there <laughs> and just doing it," you know. So like when when people you go out there like when I start going out there on the subway and I'm not even going anywhere I'm riding the subway and then I just go back home I literally went nowhere uh you know it is tough and many times it's by myself too but then you just have it in your head like you think about okay after I start getting good I'm going to look back at this time and think awesome good for you Right, and just keep that slice yeah. in your head, and try to expand it and ex expand it more and more. Mm. Really, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure, for sure. I have a and question I, for um, Lyndon. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lyndon, go for I it. I have a question. S second, uh, uh, the the wait, first guy, TC. TC. Yeah, TC. Yeah, oh, go for it. TC, thanks. How are you guys doing? First of all. Hey, um, good. How are you? Great. <laughs> I'm struggling, man. I, I'm trying. I'm attempting to use the rectangle tool, so I have a few questions about that. Yeah. In Magma, um, you're talking about how you choose colors for your form. I'm not watching the uh, the YouTube stream. I'm just doing the painting and listening along. So mm -hmm. I'm just attempting this on my own, listening to how you explained it, and I'm having a difficulty when it comes to color picking. If I look at the picture. And then I try to, I, I am actually trying to color pick from it and my colors aren't matching. So I've tossed that to the side and I'm just hand picking them, like you said. Hmm. So I'm just wondering if you have any uh, tips or suggestions on how to choose the color, especially using the rectangle tool to get your forms. I think uh, if you get the local value to be like pretty accurate, then it doesn't really matter what colors you pick. Uh, so I would focus more on the values and uh for the color just like i i looked at the wall i was like oh looks looks blue so i just like pick a blue hue and uh as long as the value is working then the material will 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 show okay yeah and are you working from the 
the background to the foreground to help with your edges and all that or uh i was kind of just painting like everything on one layer at the same time uh i just like cut cut into like the dark values of light values i cut back into light values of dark values to like carve out those shapes and yeah, you went back, you yeah, went like, from simple to complex not really like background to foreground yeah yeah for sure like what Mase was saying um like getting that dark donut shape on the on the outside and like <laughs> carving in the lights and like putting the guy on the bicycle in the middle yeah right on thanks a lot yeah no problem did the other person I think yes, come back. Flip. Come back. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Hi. Hey. Hi. Um, my name is Lisa. So I'm from the Dominican Republic and it's very much in the Caribbean. So anyways, I was wondering if you guys know about any um workshop for beginners because I'm studying like like I started the drawing, uh, let's say, to get into drawing more like last year, around September. But I started like drawing last, I think it was in December or probably November. So I've been looking for more um, stuff for beginners so I can get like, um, let's say, get better at drawing in anatomy and you know, painting and stuff like that. But, you know, like, <laughs> studying with the basics, obviously. So I was wondering if you guys knew about any. There's a new course on schoolism that just opened on Monday. It's called uh, Starting Your Journey with Cody Gramstad. Both Masse oh. and I have, have taken courses with Cody as our instructor. He's fantastic. Um, and he's very patient and uh, wonderful. Like, he's just so easy, you know, taking a course from him. Even if he's brutal mm -hmm. on you, you're still feeling like, oh, that, he's such a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, he explains things very, very well. Yeah, right. very excited for that class. So, yeah. Just one more question then. That class will be like an online class, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, perfect. Um, do you guys have the link? Or something that I can uh, check on. Yeah, I, I just throw it up on the screen since you uh, gave me a right, great yeah, reason yeah, to give that plug. Yes. <laughs> so here we go. Schoolism. Yeah, you just go to schoolism.com. You look for this banner here and you could click on it. And then it'll take you straight to his uh, course. You could do the subscribe. So this is uninstructed. But you can still watch, um, you know, you get everything except for the paint overs on your assignments. Or you can register for a paint over. You know, this is like the critiqued versions where Cody Gramstad would be working over top of your assignments, giving you personal feedback uh, geared, customized towards your weaknesses and strengths. All right. His name, you said it was Cody. Yes, Cody Gramstad. Also, if you subscribe to Schoolism, you actually get all of the courses, right? If you get a subscription, you get access to all of the courses. So then you can check them all out, you know, and that's kind of like all you need for art education, especially if you're uh, a beginner at this point. This one I'm so excited about, by the way, a frame a day workout with Helen Mingju Chen, and oh this one God. too, Pablo Carpio. I like right. These are both gonna be heavy painting uh, workouts. It's gonna be so much fun. All right, thank you. Can't wait. Yeah. That was <laughs> no problem. Yeah, you're welcome. I had a question, if I could, Bobby. Yeah, go for it, please. Hey, Lyndon. Um, hey. Just had a quick question in regards to when you first started out, um, having the, the, I don't want to say handicap, but having the limitations of the 100% opacity and, and just the blocks and the basic tools, hmm. when you gained access to 
you know, more advanced mm -hmm. tools and more uh, capabilities in regards to blending and whatever else. Did, was there a transition period where you felt kind of like, oh, man, this is hindering me more than it is helping and just kind of went reverted back to what you usually did? Uh, so when I was painting in heavy paint, I would from time to time just like switch back to Photoshop. And I actually found out when I switched back to Photoshop, my paintings looked worse and the limitations actually like helped me because uh, I was only thinking about like values and colors. And honestly, like for painting, that's that's like number one. That's all you need pretty much. You don't need fancy edges, fancy textures. It's just value and color. Love that. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. So Linda, do you use like less of the functions in Photoshop when you work now? Like compared to, you know, before? Uh, for my day job, I work as a background painter for, for TV animation. And for that uh, show, I just got to use like every trick in the bag. I, 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 like, <laughs> I would like to keep painting in my style, but the, the pace of, the, of working in, uh, in animation is like really fast. So I can't, mm -hmm. I don't have the luxury of like painting the way I want. I just use, uh, use, use whatever Photoshop hacks I have uh, available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm so proud of you, by the way. Like, we've only known each other for a couple years or whatever, but um, just seeing you develop and just like a rocket ship in the last year or so uh, has been very, very inspirational. So oh, thanks, you. Bobby. Yeah. Uh, I think listening to when I was in school, uh, listening to your, your podcast and all your interviews, like, really helped me out. Uh, at the time, like, from my perspective, I was already working pretty hard. Like, I did all my school assignments and I painted outside of class, but, like, it, it's, it's actually not enough. Um, and hearing stories about, like, what's actually possible when, when like, you set your mind to something. And, like, uh, I remember one interview. I, I forgot who the artist was, but I think, I think she uh, took, like, a bus ride for, like, six hours just to get to an art teacher. And, like, yeah, stories about like that just like reminds me. I was like, oh, it's like yeah, I can I can work a lot harder. Wow. But you have some stories too. I would love to hear, you know, about like um, I don't know about any of the how you ended up at the schoolism house or how you ended up at brainstorm or you know, whatever, whatever you want to share. Yeah, so how I got to the uh, schoolism work workshop was, uh, I think I was taking a digital painting class in, in OCAD, uh, the, the art school I went to. And uh, I, I heard from a classmate that you guys were like doing this like big, big convention type thing in, um, in like, was it the downtown the hotel or like downtown? Uh, oh, yeah. And the guest was like, was like Stanley Lau. Uh, uh, think Shiun Kim and a uh, oh, bunch of Andrea think, oh, Andrea Blasage, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and yeah, that was like the first like type of um like workshop event that I've been to, and I was just like blown away. I just like kept learning about um like the stuff you guys were doing, like your YouTube channel about like the schoolism online classes, and uh, and eventually like the workshop and. I think I took the online like self-taught classes for like a year before I decided, okay, there's um these these guys like they they really know what they're doing. I, I'm I'm committed to to learning from them. So that's when I signed up for the for the Lake House workshop. Awesome. And then the brainstorm story. Cause that's hardcore. Oh. <laughs> that that one's hardcore. Oh man. So uh I was at Lightbox Expo. Uh, to, to, and I, I visited the brainstorm table and I heard that, uh, one of the teachers was Armand Serrano and, and, uh, you remember what happened like the first year in Lightbox, uh, that the, there was like overwhelming support. There was like so many people flooding in that some of the workshops, um, in the, in the, in the secondary like convention center was like, was so packed that like. 
there's just like not not enough seats for everybody. And I remember I was super salty. I was lining up for Armand's um, talk. I think I was like like the 80th person in line, but the room only had capacity for like 70 people or something. Oh, no. <laughs> oh man, I'm so sorry about that. We're fixing that right away. We're fixing that. We got we got uh, plans. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I saw like just like the people in front of me get in that I got oh, cut off. So no. when, I, when I heard that Armand was like teaching at Brainstorm, I'm like, okay, I'm, I, I want to learn from this guy, like no matter what. So I actually changed my plane ticket to go go home to Toronto earlier so I can grab like my laptop, grab all my gear, like grab a change of underwear and just like, I just moved to LA for like six months. Um, yeah, and I'm really grateful to my aunt who let me like freeload off her for like for like six months. She she let me stay at her place in her spare room and uh she even like like cooked meals for me, which is super nice of her. And yeah, that's how that's how I was able to survive in that way for a while. Man, love that. So inspiring. <laughs> that's pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Lyndon, you came to a lot of the um schoolism live workshops too. You you know, you oh, yeah. went out of the way you like volunteered for us and and you, like i think there was a seattle where you already bought tickets to um the workshop but you were still like you know willing to help and volunteer for us so i thought that was like really awesome oh yeah that, that was so fun uh got to meet uh get to hang out with walter a lot more um our marcelo uh mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was super fun. Happy to help. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I, I I'm like I see you and I'm like, wait, I thought I'm in China right now. And then I'm like, <laughs> no, I am in China. What the hell? <laughs> right? That oh, was, no, that, was the, that, that was on Shanghai, right? Yeah. Um, oh you were there too? Oh yeah. my god. That's amazing. I think, I think that was just really lucky timing because I was visiting family at the time. In, uh, in in China, I just like bought a train ticket and just went to Shanghai and just it just worked out. There's a whole band, you know, that would travel to the various like I, I would see people in various countries. Uh, there's this one person. If you're listening, I would love to hear from you is this wonderful person. She uh, she was in dentistry and then she liked art. That was like the first kind of introduction. And the second kind of meeting is like, oh, I'm thinking of uh, pursuing art and changing my field. And then like the next introduction and every time it's like different country. All of a sudden it's like, I quit. I'm doing art. I'm, you know, I'm going for it. And it's like so cool to see, uh, y you know, the development of, of all these amazing careers and stuff. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I have a friend in Toronto. Uh, shout out to, to to Katie. She's probably in the chat right now. Uh, she actually went to do like biochemistry or something in in, in Waterloo. Then uh, she decided she want, really wanted to to do art. So she was like, she was she graduated. She was job ready, and she just like and like just switched over on a on a, like on a leap of faith. And funny story, she also went to the schoolism lake house workshop and. Now she's uh she's working in mobile games in Toronto for um for I think for Glue. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so great. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm so she, glad she came that... out to Oh sorry, I was just about to ask. She came to a couple of the planar painting sessions, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's really yeah, cool. I remember. Sorry, Bobby. No, I'm so glad that like you all find each other too. All the people that went to the schoolism uh, Lake House, or when it was in Toronto, the Schoolism House. Uh, so many of them still connect, you know, and it's so great. Well, that's how we found yeah. Schwen as well. Schwen, I, I totally forgot. She was in the Schoolism Lake House. And, or actually, sorry, we met a couple of times as well outside of that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I digress. Anybody else want to um, join in and join in the conversation here? Anyone from Discord? You know, more often than not, I I find that interesting that you had that friend that was in biochemistry for however long and, you know, switched. Uh, 
I, I feel like a lot of people more surprisingly go to a different field completely and uh, take the adventure towards art, whatever their intent is. And uh, I guess my question is like, is that usually all, you know, like internally aspiring? Like, do you feel like innately they always want to be an artist or has it always just been some sort of trigger in them that they wanted to do art or something they saw just made them inclined to that instead of say biochemistry software development or data science hmm. Hmm. i think a lot of times uh parents they want they want us to do well mm -hmm. so they try to like steer us towards a direction that's like safer for um for like finding a career and making a living so i think a lot of uh people go to go to certain schools to kind of like please their parents but they along the way they figure out like what they really want to do uh yeah what about you bobby mm -hmm. I, I i think you were doing something completely different before you became an artist right yeah i didn't know that i wanted to be a professional artist until i was like maybe 20 21 uh, otherwise i thought it would just be a hobby because um because mm -hmm. i you know i listened to my parents and my parents, I love them. They're great people. They love me. And they just thought it was the best thing for me to not do art. <laughs> I was I was in a similar situation. Um, I think with it wasn't really the, my parents' pressure. It was more like my myself pressure. Like, I felt like I was pressuring myself because all my close friends were all going to very academic schools. Like, they're studying science. They're studying law. You know, all that stuff. And then I'm just like... What am I doing? So I, I was like, I, I guess I should go to some sort of university. And I mean, interior design was somewhat like art. Like it is art related, but um, I remember going there only to realize like, I, I this is not what I want. And it's that one trigger. It's like when one person sh like sh showed me like animate the animation world. That's when like mm. I just like took the steering wheel and just like went that way. Like you know, hard turn. And I dropped everything and just went to, you know, applied for animation school. So sometimes it takes that one one little spark to, you know, get people to pursue this path. You know, I wanna I wanna say something here. I wanna toot both your horns a little bit because like um you know, a lot of times professionals we get to a certain level and then Oh, this other person comes in and, oh, they're new. Uh, they couldn't have gotten to my level. They couldn't have, you know, gotten there that quick. I've worked so hard to get up to, you know, like, and it's always like, well, you are under me or something like that. And I've always disliked that. I've always tried to keep my mind open to really try to take in everybody as they are right now. It doesn't matter how much time they did. And you guys have both gotten to such awesome professional levels in such a short amount of time. Uh, just, you know, it just goes to show that, hey, the, you know, Joe Schmo that's listening right now and that thinks very low of themselves and, you know, doesn't just start it or whatever, that can't really draw very well at all. You could be here in like two, two years or something you know you put that hard work in there and you could be doing amazing things not that doing a podcast with me is amazing but you know if it's any kind of validation for you then i i say yeah believe in it believe in yourself mm -hmm. uh because mm -hmm. i'm sure each one of you now believes in the potential of a person that that has drive so much more now than maybe when you've beca begun yeah uh i think this is like the the global situation right now this is like actually the perfect time to to get good at art there's so many people that i know in my other discord groups that uh they were working in some uh, some other job and they 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 actually got let go because um they they are not allowed to like uh work in the offices anymore or something and uh they just went all in it, into art and a lot of them found work very like 
very soon, like like in a span of like six months or something. It's crazy, and like they just started, uh, like in this in this like lockdown time. Uh, wow. When you when you work hard, and like you're a good person, uh, you're you're nice to work with. You're、uh, friendly. People see that they take note, and when they when they need like I was like, oh, we need some extra help on、um, this show or something for for like TV or or they just have a project and. They're just you're you're gonna come to mind if they see you working hard, yeah. And what a key like I I want to key in on that word friendly, because that again it's like something that both of you have,、uh, very similar. You know, is like both are just very friendly people and so much <laughs> easier to work with or to talk to or to hang out with when the person is friendly and they don't have any like. You know, any chip on their shoulder or something like that, and those kind of, yeah, good personality. Both of y'all,、mm-hmm. you guys are great. <laughs> Aw, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Just be genuine and nice to people. Yeah.、Uh, can we go to a question here?、Um, Isa, Isa, Lisa says, "How do you combat art burnout?" How do you guys combat art burnout? Hmm.、Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I'm, I'm pretty burnt out right now. But、uh, I just I started a painting challenge in the beginning of the year.、Um, I'm trying to paint every day for for a whole year, and、uh, just setting setting like a number on like the task that you have to do, and. And just like keep that in mind, even if you're like you don't feel like、uh, practicing or or working,、uh, just keep that number in mind. You have to finish it no matter what, and and yeah, it's gonna motivate you to to push through. <laughs> yeah, cause like, okay, let me show something here. See in the comments right here, Lyndon puts two seventy one of three sixty five. He really puts it out there and commits. You know, if you、yeah. really <laughs> want to be driven, <laughs> you do something like that, and then all of a sudden, everybody will hold you accountable. <laughs> But it yeah, worked. It worked. Look how many people are looking at your art now, right? Since you started, there's a huge difference, isn't there? Yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, not that like followers, like the number of followers, really matter, but. I started like、um, beginning of the year. I had like two hundred followers, and now I'm like at sixteen, sixteen k. So,、wow. really grateful for like all the all the support everyone's giving me. Two hundred to sixteen k. <laughs> That's like that GME stock. That <laughs> yeah, that you know what.、Um, also, that's another thing I have to thank Lyndon is like after I saw like how. Like just super consistent you are with your daily paintings. That motivated me, motivated me to do my own personal studies. So every day、um, I do a study. Like I don't I don't post it online, but、mm. I set aside anywhere from like twenty minutes to an hour to do a study. And just like keeping in mind that number does keep me accountable. And luckily I have two other people.、Um, I think they're in the chat right now, but. We we're kind of like accountability part,、uh, buddies right now, so we kind of like check with each other. It's like, oh, did you do your study? Did you do your daily study? It's like, where is it? Like, keep show me. So just、um, having that kind of like、uh, consistency, even though you really don't want to do it, I feel like just getting through those like, you know, struggles、uh, kind of grows you. You grow as an artist, but also like you become like stronger as an artist because. Like Bobby, I'm sure, and Linda, you know, like when you're working, there's times when you're just like doing client work and you're burnt out. But it's like you kind of still have to keep going, and just going through the that motion definitely like builds that muscle in your mind. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it feels so good at the end of the month. You put all your all your paintings onto like a calendar or something, and you、yeah. get to like it's all, every day is like filled. <laughs> That's what I do, and it's awesome because like you remember each one, and you you know remember how, like how you felt, and just like being able to see that all in one, you know,、uh, page 
It's just a very gratifying feeling. There's so, like, that's something with human nature or something, right? Like, I feel like it, cause we all have that, this whole entire idea of like, you take your time, the more time you take to do it in collecting whatever it is or doing that little thing every day, the more like, the more you like it in the very end, you just stare at it and go, wow. This is 20 years of bottle caps I've collected and, <laughs> or whatever, you know, <laughs> you're like, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday I was, I was, uh, I was watching and we were watching before the stream, I say you and I we were watching, uh, these old kind of like vlogs I was doing, right. Called choose, choose my own adventure. And I would do these vlogs of the different trips I'd go on. Oh, I'm so glad I did those now, especially like in quarantine. Watching those again is so nice, you know. Mm. Miss everybody. Miss doing those mm. traveling workshops. Where do you want us to go next year, 2022? If we go and start doing workshops again, which city do you want us to go to? Put it in the comments. You might just see us. <laughs> Yeah, world tour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any yeah. other questions? Do you have instructors in specific cities available for guest talks or anything? Well, nobody's really going into any schools and such, so I don't know why it might need to be local anymore. We can totally kind of expand our minds, I think, unless there's something I'm missing here. It was just um, in the future, if there is a live experience, I know some people get a lot more out of a, a live presentation than the, the virtual. That, that's all. I could tell you that we are working on some stuff that nobody's ever experienced before. Nobody. So it's going to be crazy. I'm glad you asked that. It'll, it, we'll make the announcement um, probably, hopefully in a month, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Excited. Thank you. My pleasure. Because I've been experimenting a lot with the ability to kind of evolve the workshop game you know, just like what we did with Lightbox Expo, how do we change the game with workshops, especially online? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, I just want to, <laughs> I just want to list a couple of these places and you let me know what kind of interests you must say. So we got, um, come back to the UK. Well, have you done any of the London trips, must say? No. Um... I wanted to. Oh. <laughs> I should have. I like. I remember London, uh, Dublin. Think, those yeah. were fantastic. I'd also yeah. love to check out Scotland. I know we'll probably lose a ton of money on that one too, but I kind of want to go. Um, <laughs> we also have on here Miami, Taipei. Yes, my hometown. Mm -hmm. Well, where I was born as a little baby. Uh, Costa Rica, Netherlands, yeah, from Patricia, <laughs> London, uh, New Jersey, New York, Malaysia, Chicago, New York, uh, Egypt, oh my god, I would love to go to Egypt, Switzerland, where else is there, Dominican Republic, oh, I would love to make a nice little vacation slash workshop there, mm -hmm. so many, Florida, <laughs> New York. Um, Antarctica, uh, okay. <laughs> Bring a lot of white paint, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Paris, Indonesia, Mexico. Okay, it's growing too big now. Let's... Uh, Everywhere. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We got about 10 minutes left before um, this painting is done. Anybody else want to chime in and, in the conversation here? Hi, Bobby Chu. This is Valerie. Hey, Valerie. Hi. This is the first time I'm chatting in this place like this, but uh, I started in schoolism and I'm taking the Procreate and the uh, ZBrush classes right now. Oh, nice. Very different from each other. 
<laughs> oh yeah, I need to start learning how to use my tablet big time. I'm so I'm I'm good at using Photoshop, but if I want to travel, I need to learn how to use Procreate and no. try to use it the way how I use um Photoshop. Definitely, definitely. And uh just a reminder, Monday your instructor Nikolai Lockerson will be on the stream painting with okay. us doing uh the next challenge. Okay. okay, I would like to chat with him then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, get your questions prepared. Yeah, I was just listening to, listening in on a ha burnout. And uh, if, if you want my advice on that, I think if you're starting to burn out and you're starting to judge yourself, I would like stop what you're doing and try to find things that inspire you. Mm. Or yeah, for sure. if it's really bad, <laughs> like what happened to me, I would probably get a therapist <laughs> oh wow <laughs> hey there's no if, you know like that's a really great advice as well you break your arm you yeah. go to the doctor you 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 know um have some other issues that you need to deal with mentally you go to the doctor that's what you do exactly but yeah. definitely find things that inspire you like if, you, if you're getting burnt out and you're starting to judge yourself and you're starting to compare yourself which is very common in the concept art industry, as I know it is. Um, I would just stop what you're doing, find things that you enjoy, find us, evaluate your environment. If you're not getting a good amount of support, if you don't have a good support system, find yourself a good support system. That's because the support system is very important. Um, also, video games the things you enjoy most read a book find creative inspiration like again i, I I'm, I'm saying it <laughs> or um just things that you you love doing and then when you calm down and you feel like you like you um also write posts write things on post-its and put it on your mirror and like say that tell yourself that you are worth it or that you are special mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. I I am a talented artist. People it like to like to like to be around me. Mm. I like the, I the idea with the post-it notes on the mirror. <laughs> and yeah, the, awesome. see it's see that you. Yeah, and also chatting on the Discord for me as well. Uh, chatting with people uh, sometimes can get you out of that funk. Uh, mm -hmm. Before I leave, I actually want to uh, take this opportunity also to ask Lyndon something. Um, <laughs> If, if if you don't mind, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, I I saw this um, like your um, challenge or actually Massey pointed to me the you vember you oh you vember yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Linda will kill it <laughs> so good thank you. thank you I mean how how fast are they like uh, did you do like a painting every day that you had like a, a method to it or you, yeah. Just wondering, like, what your process was for for that challenge and nailing it so sweet. <laughs> um, I think I just did all my research, like all my reference collecting, on the weekends, so I know exactly what I'm gonna paint uh, on the day, so I don't have to uh, spend too much energy. Mm -hmm. Like, I think at the time I was I was just starting uh, my job at uh, in the in background painting and. It was just I, I would finish work like uh, it's an Australian company, so I would finish work pretty pretty late at night because I'm trying to overlap with their with their time zone and yeah, like if I had to do all my research after work, I would I would pass out. So I just do all the prep work beforehand, and I just I know exactly what I'm going to do. I just go into it right away. That's another one of those yeah. things where like you collect them all together, and it's like so cool to look at in the end. <laughs> Uh, that's like yeah and to see it like <laughs> i remember i'm all, I'm always like when's linden gonna post i'm gonna like i'm excited <laughs> to see his next post because knowing that you do it daily it's like i'm already expecting it <laughs> so for those did you look for images that were kind of yellow for your yellow stuff or did you just not care and go i'm gonna convert everything into that hue whatever that's the challenge so I actually 
got the idea from looking at um, another local Toronto artist, um, Caroline Z. Her, her, um, she's an oil painter, and all her paintings she would tint or, or um, yeah, she would tint in a certain like very dominating hue. Uh, she likes the blues a lot and greens a lot, and uh, I, I got the opportunity to like, kind of like watch her work and what she does is uh, she would block in like a big, big like underpainting with, with the color that she's like thinking about. Then she'll just paint everything on top of that like comparatively. So say like mm -hmm. there's a red on, on a green, green like green tinted uh, background, like that red is going to be it's going to be pretty like desaturated uh, and just having that base color down first, like really, really helped me out. Oh, yeah. okay. So you like, but then the, what I'm trying to understand is when you're choosing the subject matter. Yeah. Right. Like, was it, you're looking at a blue photo and you're like, you know what? I want to challenge myself by putting this into the yellow hue. Right. Hmm. Or was it more like, look for photos where it's like yeah there's a bit of yellow there i could really push that uh so i think most of my references in that challenge i i just like took myself like on my cell phone then i actually started using a uh, adobe lightroom at that time and uh there's a lot of um it, you can do the exact same thing just like on the base photoshop or probably even procreate but lightroom just has all the functions like out in the open and it's like a really stripped down version of it and um, there's a temperature control and a, and a tint control. So I just like kind of like slide the slider like slightly towards like say like I'm doing yellow painting and I slide it towards yellow. And it really helps me like see like what I'm oh. what, like I'm trying to visualize. Yeah, I see. Oh, yeah. that's neat. I think I think Zach Retz does um, similar things uh, in Photoshop. He would tint his like photos in certain ways to, to come up with like see the possibilities like in color. I just like mm -hmm. how you study like that. That's really cool. That you would do that oh, to the reference, you. right? You do that to the reference to understand colors better. It's very neat. I I have to also um, say how uh, like bring up one thing that you you said about like kind of setting things up over the weekend so that like when the day comes you already have something prepared. And I feel like that's a pretty important key. It's like a Bobby, we were actually talking about it yesterday with Abed about and like how you're you have a calendar and everything is set there. So like whatever like um, calendar event happens, you just look at your phone. You're like, oh, OK, I have to go to that. It's like yeah. just making things automated makes things so much easier, especially with things like studies. It's like give yourself the chance to not have to think and just like have it there and just do it <laughs> it's it's like it's like um traditional like um art it's like just have it out so that you're just gonna go to it it's not like oh, okay i have to get this paper and i have to get my paints out oh, here's like oh, where's my where's my thing <laughs> you know yeah. so i think just like having that automated makes like a big big difference so yeah like having references ready it's like on on days that you don't really know what to study that's that's very smart, I find. I also want to go back to um, the person that was mentioning the mental health thing. You know, that is such an important thing out there. Like, please, you know, come find the Discord channel. If you are looking for people that you, you know, you're feeling alone, you're feeling like you want to extend your network of, you know, artist friends, because you might not mm -hmm. have as many artist friends around you. You know, that's... That really is like um, our hopes and dreams for our purpose for making the Discord is to make a community where we can all hang out and learn together. Um, it's totally free. You know, it's totally free. Uh, I did want to mention this other thing here that was super important. Um, and it's kind of sad. And, you know, it's something that we should all know about. Michael Andrew Nash, you know, he also dealt with a lot of um, mental issues and things like that. I didn't know this person. I, I knew of this from Ben Morrow's tweet here, and I watched the video, and it's just so sad because, you know, he took his own life. Um, mm -hmm. And in the video, you hear about 
from his mother, like everything that he had, had to deal with, uh, you know, in the industry and stuff like that, working away from home, um, trying to get back to Australia during the pandemic because he got laid off, you know, and couldn't get back to his own home and stuff like that. Um, we need to help each other and we need to protect each other uh, from these things. And, you know, if you know anybody that you haven't talked to in a while, Maybe call him up today and just start off the conversation with, I have no reason to call you. Just wanted to catch up. All right. So I don't know if, we, <laughs> is there anything else that we might have missed uh, in this stream here? No, this is really good advice. I'm listening to all of it. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, I want to thank, of course, the Discord community. Yay. And our Yay. amazing mods. Thank you so much for everything that you do to make our space uh, a nice, friendly environment. And to my wonderful, amazing assistant, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie, for everything you do. Thanks, Jamie. Co-host, Masei Seki. And our amazing <laughs> uh, esteemed guest, uh, Lyndon Lee. I, I, you know, I'm just so happy, uh, you know, for everything that you've accomplished and all the amazing things that you've been doing. You're an inspiration. Thank you, Lyndon, for joining mm -hmm. us. Thank you for having me. All right. And that's it. So tune in again Monday, Nikolai Lockertson. Take care, everybody. And leave some comments before you leave. Leave some comments. All right, because there's no comments in the other ones. It's like everybody comments in the chat, and then there's no comments when I post this, and it looks like some okay, lame video. Let's fill video. it with love. <laughs> Yay, thanks. All right, take care, everybody. Bye. Bye, bye.